I'm Heather Parry, and this is my co-host, Kirsty Logan. Hi. Hey. <laughs> Do you think we should bring up, at some point, the fact that I say um, fondly, and you say lovingly? Because it must be driving mm. people crazy. I think I hadn't realised that until right this moment. Um, maybe you're more fond and I'm more loving. I did think that. I was thinking mm. about this the other day when I was cooking dinner. And I was like, oh, I'm more fond. It's like, a good point. coldly pleasant about things, and you're more loving, so... I'm more, it works. More an active. <laughs> yeah, more effusive. I don't know. I'm like, yeah, it's fine. I hadn't really noticed that. Maybe well, that can help people to tell us apart. Yeah. And if they didn't notice before, they'll certainly notice now. There you go. <laughs> so so Heather is the more northern fond one, and I am the more Scottish slash Midlands loving one. Yep. There we go. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Yeah, moving on, that was good. Um, before we get started, I just want to do a really quick shout out to our Patreon supporters. Just really appreciate you guys so much. We've only been going for a couple of months, so to have this level of support is just so much appreciated and we're really glad to have you as part of our Point Horror community. And it's keeping us in Point Horror books. Yes. Which is really useful. Yes. And in the odd bit of cake. Yes, we have got a little bit of cake for later today, so I'm quite excited about that. Um, so, today... We are talking about 1996's The Bride by Deathkins. Deathkins. <laughs> D.E. Atkins. Surely a pen name. Yeah, and I didn't notice until you pointed it out to me. And then I, um, I pointed out on our Twitter and other people hadn't noticed as well. Really? Is that because is that we're stupid or is it because it's quite an odd name? You know, Atkins sounds like it could be a real surname. No, I mean, I think it is, but... Yeah. And probably that, possibly that is their real name. Maybe but... Dorothy Emily Atkins is livid listening to this podcast right now. Well, I'm interested to see that you have made Deathkins female, because listen to this author bio from the book. D.E. Atkins was born and raised in the haunted south and spent a wasted childhood trying to catch Santa Claus, the Easter Bunny, the Tooth Fairy and the Ghost in a woman's dormitory in a local Methodist college. Upon reaching adulthood, Atkins moved to the prosaic north... What does that mean? And eventually took up horror writing as a way to fill the gap left by a dearth of supernatural beings. The author enjoys reading true crime accounts, criminal case law, murder mysteries, and mail order catalogues. Athkins will not go to scary movies as afraid of blood and believes that there is much more to this world than meets the eye. In free moments, Athkins enjoys horror to culture. Mm. <sighs> Accumulating by fair means or foul plants for a horror garden at the edge of the woods behind the author's house where baby's breath and deadly nightshade thrive. Do you notice anything about that bio? It's completely non-gendered. Mm -hmm. And it is 100% a fake bio. Yeah. Because I have written fake author bios <laughs> because I am a ghostwriter as mm -hmm. well. And that's exactly that. Rule of three. Mm -hmm. um, overshare. Mm -hmm. We don't need that much information. No. Nope. Uh, no gendered. Yeah. Nothing about personal life, really. No partner or anything. Nope. Deathkins. Also, a really good name for um, a goth's cat. Yes, most definitely. Deathkins. Yeah. So, I wonder if Deathkins is one of the other Point Horror authors. Well, I thought it could be R.L. Stein. No. Because there are a lot of similarities, I think. I don't think so, because I quite like this book. <laughs> And I'll just leave it there, my opinion. Meow. Meow. <laughs> this kitten's got claws. I'm Deckins. <laughs> <laughs> the goth cat. Um, I d yeah. Mm. I don't know. I don't think it is. I also feel like they would put Bob Stein on the books. Because he, he was quite mm. famous even then. Yeah. This is just what they've done at Scholastic. Or whatever. Yeah. Whoever publishes it. I think it's like an editor at Scholastic. I mean, it? they, it's so paint by numbers in a lot of ways. Yeah. Anyway, if you are Deathkins, Deathkins, you know, good, shout out good to kitty. us. Good yeah. kitty. <laughs> Let us know, because we're not convinced that you are a real person. Speaking of goth cats, mm -hmm. 
Uh, just to Where carry is on, this going? <laughs> just, to, just to carry on what must be coming across as my obsession with Kat Von D. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, the listeners don't even know that I had a dream about her the other night. I mean, I told listeners you about. must know this. <laughs> Vital information. I've definitely mentioned her on the podcast before. But um, she has three black sort of hairless cats and I think one's called Nietzsche one's called Piaf and one's called Poe I'm sorry I hate her she sounds <laughs> just kind the worst she's so committed you know, I mean I'll still buy that eyeliner but she sounds like a nightmare I've never bought any of her makeup okay. but she's so committed to that thing you know she's so committed to what she's doing she I sounds like it. a fake bio <laughs> <laughs> I had a dream the other night where she um heavily pregnant showed up at my house um, and really angry as well. And then there was um, a vegan girl with me um, who didn't use vegan makeup. And Kat Von D really had a go of her. And then I had to get on social media and tell everyone about this for some reason. Me, vegan dreams. <laughs> get a <laughs> grip. <laughs> Literal opposite of cheese dreams. Fucking hell. Oh, yeah. It's like, what's that fake vegan cheese called? Oh, it's awful. Yeah. Yeah. You're having whatever that thing's called, dreams. <laughs> There's a, a grime artist called JME who's a vegan, and one of his lines is, It's got no taste like vegan cheese. <laughs> Aww. I don't, it. don't even call it cheese. No. Just, just say just it's don't. a completely separate food stuff. Yeah. Anyway, we're getting off track. We're sorry, as yeah, always, we haven't even as started yet. Christ. So, today we're talking about D.E. Atkins' The Bride. Um, what is this cover like? Tell me more about this book. It's quite a good cover. I will say it's um, very uh, mustard and burnt ochre. Is that mm. how you say it? Oh, ochre. That's beautiful. Ochre. You should you should name nail polish colours. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I saw the most sexist nail polish colours the other day. They were called like princess and things oh, like that. And I was like, fuck go sake. fuck yourself. It's twenty eighteen. Anyway, um, she princess. who? What kind of person wants to be a princess anyway? Surely it's queen or nothing. Yeah, come on. <laughs> A lack of ambition. <laughs> I should have known that would be your concern with that. <laughs> be more ambitious. Yeah, mine's like too girly. You're like, she's not even aiming high. Come on. Empress. At least try... Exactly. <laughs> I never wanted to be a Disney princess, but I wanted to be a Disney empress. Exactly. Queen or get the fuck out. <laughs> Queen or it didn't happen. <laughs> um, so, mustardy, burnt, ochre-y type of colours. Um, we've got the bride in gold. Um, and the bride herself is in shadow. Mm. Um, and it, I thought for a while she had like those big um, fake uh, brightly coloured dreadlocks coming off her head. Oh, that is what it looks like. Like yeah. she's gone to a rave. But actually, I think it's supposed to be um, a veil. But yeah, she does oh, look yeah. like she belongs in um, Cyberdog. But <laughs> she's wearing pearls and she's holding lilies, the flower of death. Oh yeah, I hate lilies. Oh, I love them, but um, they poison cats. Oh yes, mm-hmm. so you can't they would them. poison Deathkins. Yes, Deathkins. <gasps> Maybe that's why she's written a book. Maybe. <laughs> I just don't. I think I don't know if it's because I've got hay fever, but like the the taste of them gets in my throat. Lilies. Are you eating the lilies? No, but you know, like the smell of them. They're not yeah, nasturtiums. <laughs> I don't know. I just I've had them in my house before, and I could like taste them in my throat. I don't mm, like it. They're very pungent, and yeah. the um, the pollen gets. It stains shit as well, that's why yeah. I don't like. Leave them too long and it gets... Anyway, this is very anyway. boring. So. I know, anyway. Um, should you say the tagline? Oh yeah, so the tagline is, Till death do you part. Which, yeah. I think it should be, Till death do us part. Oh yeah. Because you... Do you both part? What are you yeah. going to part from? Mm. Till death, to, to death do you part? But that's what they say in the vows. To death do... To each person they say, do you take... So and so, blah 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 blah, till death do you part. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, I didn't do that for my vows, but that's the traditional vow. Oh, I zone out at weddings. <laughs> no one I don't listens know if to that the many chat. people do the traditional vows anymore because a lot of people have humanist weddings and they yeah. have maybe personalised vows and stuff. So okay, but apparently, yeah, that's the traditional. I do you know? I think I only know that from films. Yeah, vows in films. Okay, then, but, all right, I'll let them have it, it. But it only makes sense if it's said to each person individually, I guess. Yeah. It doesn't make sense to mean, like, both of you. Till death to you, but anyway. anyway. Till death to us part is more sinister. Mm. Although it does imply that it is the bridegroom or other bride who is killing. Mm, 
and is it? Well, we will well, see. Well, we will see if we get we on to see. the book at any point. <laughs> Let's do it right now. Okay, so here we go. We open, we meet blonde bad girl model Blaine Harrod and the beautiful dark haired Alison DeWitt. Now, what's happened is that Blaine has just pinned Alison's hand to a dressing table with a jeweled letter opener. Oh my god! <gasps> Oh my god. However, um actually she's only nicked her little finger, which I was like, You've you've just said she pinned her hand and to me that means through the back of the hand. And it's covered in blood. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But then but then it kinda of pulls back and goes, Oh no, actually she just ever so slightly nicked her little finger and I'm like, mm, okay. Yeah. It's not quite the same. I have to read you the first bit of really terrible writing. Oh my god. Only the it. first bit. But it's only it's on page, on page two. one. <laughs> page two. <laughs> yes. Um so it turns out that they're doing a photo shoot. Is that correct? Mm-hmm. Because um, there's so much in this book that I didn't really get. <laughs> <laughs> they're doing a photo shoot and they're dressed as a bride and a bridesmaid as well. And they're opening some letters? Yeah, I don't know if that's... An important part of the bridal Not ceremony. Not really, but okay, fine. <laughs> so um, it's quite a good description, wasn't it? Like, it does look a bit like, wow, that's mm-hmm. happening. Um When she did look up at the triumphant, translucently pale face above hers, framed in a spill of golden hair and ivory bridal lace, her expression didn't change. Turn over the page. Which made it more frightening somehow. Hmm. (laughs) Don't. Okay. Don't. (laughs) Terrible writing. And also somehow. Somehow. Oh, I wonder how. It's the non-reaction to the... I can't be bothered to explain. It's just somehow... Just top of page two, terrible writing already. Sorry. Yeah. Anyway. One thing I do like is that at this point we still think that it's like jammed through. right through her hand. And then Alison pulls the letter opener out and examines her lipstick in the blade, which that's I was quite like, good. power move. Yeah. Come on, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> but I was still imagining she basically had a hole in the back of her hand and she was still like looking and at it her was lipstick. Smeared and it was all blood. smeared, yeah. yeah. But not quite as good as no. that. But still, still, I think power move and then she launches herself at Blaine and they're held back by their assistants dun, dun, dun. Dun, 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 dun. so you know we've set up this um, argument between explosive the two of them. relationship exactly frenemy ship best frenemies so then skip to our main character Jamie Jamie is off to be the bridesmaid in real life for Blaine who is her cousin and they are at Sand Hill, which is a sprawling beachside house. As soon as we get there, we meet suspect number one, very clearly signposted as suspect number one, Clara, who is Blaine's assistant. Not surprisingly, Clara has got glasses. (sighs) Mousy, white shirt done up to the neck, quite a long skirt. Do you know what? You can be hot and wear glasses, she says, pushing her glasses up her nose. (laughs) Anyway, uh, so Clara, Specky Clara, um, <laughs> is not only has she got glasses, she's always making notes in a little notebook. She's quite catty, though. Yeah, I like that. She's about not her. very passive. She's like, oh, could you go where you're going, please? Thank yeah, you. she's like, brainy bitch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, we also meet the gorgeous Drew. Oh. Yeah. Clearly, we don't fancy Drew. <laughs> hey, <this laughs> Can guy. we tell that we don't fancy Drew? Oh, oh he's the worst. Okay, so Drew. I really like this. He's just described as having long brown hair. But it doesn't say how long. How long? Because I'm imagining Rapunzel. Mm. Like he has incredibly long floor length, like flowing, or maybe like Cousin It. Oh, Forrest Gump when he's done his running. Mm hmm. Yeah, just like endless hair. But it probably doesn't mean that. Probably but, you know. to the shoulders. Probably. Uh, at most. I like to picture him as Rapunzel. <laughs> Let's, let's just picture that. Drupunzel. Yeah, that's what I'm seeing. Mm, Drupunzel. Okay. Um, so, Drew tells Jamie that this house is haunted by a ghost bride. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. I mean, first first thing, don't get married there then. Don't, <laughs> don't. So much of this book, I was like, oh, just don't. Just, 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 just don't do, do it, it then. Just do it. Just, do something else, else. yeah. Else. <laughs> Don't stop doing that. Anyway, um, <laughs> then he also introduces her to his sister, the famous Kelly Kane. Sadly, not a BDSM star. Do you think that's a um, a precursor to the drug that they're clearly all on throughout this book? C- cocaine. <laughs> oh my god! 
you know, I did not even think about that. I didn't until you said it. Oh my god, it totally is. Yeah. Mm hmm. Death in- loves a pun, obviously. <laughs> so Kelly Kane. Okay. Oh my god! And there's so You've many. It. There's so many weird nods in this book to them behaving strangely, or being wide-eyed, mm. or sweating quite a lot. <laughs> I was like, I think you're trying to tell us something. You've cracked it. Oh my god, genius! <laughs> um, so then, Drew also introduces her to Blaine's groom, the filthy rich and drop dead gorgeous Preston Alden. Oh, even the name. Oh yeah, yeah. douchebag's yeah. name. I hate him so much. Okay, Jamie immediately. Wants to fuck him. Here we go. This is from the book. He was older. He looked as if he was used to being in charge. As if he knew what he wanted and how to get it. No matter what it was. Jamie blushed at the sudden thought of just what Prez might want. So we've got a bit of a Fifty Shades of Grey shit going on here. Like, she wants to bang him. So bad. Mm. I'm sorry, I'm going to call it right now. Jamie is so horny through this she, whole book. She is a perv. But then she doesn't... There's people perving on her and she doesn't go with it. Yeah. But she's like virgin perv. She's like perving on everyone and wants to fuck them, but doesn't actually fuck anyone. Yeah. You know? Because she's a good girl. Blech. I don't know. Because, I mean, who would... I mean, he's called... She even calls him prez. That's even worse. See, I was... I'm thinking it as press in my head, which really <laughs> takes away a lot of sex. It makes me think of ironing. Oh, hey, press. Press. <laughs> this is, Annie and I always laugh. Um, there's like a dry cleaning place near our house that's called Velvety. <laughs> <laughs> I just think it's so funny. Velvety. It's so, there's something so gross about it and I can't even really explain why. But every time we go past it, we look at each other and go, Velvety is <laughs> stupid <laughs> I don't know why. Velvety. Velvety. That's so grim for some reason. So there we go. Let's write a romance novel about a guy called Press and a girl called Velvety. (laughs) I could just vomit in my mouth a bit. Anyway, um, so then Jamie sees Preston, Press, Press, who, um, (laughs) Velvety, who she wants to fuck and Blaine throws evils at her. (gasps) Why might that be? I think we're going to find out. We should probably also say that um, Jamie's there without her mum. Yes. Because she's been invited for the pre-party. Which, we'll get into this. That's a very American thing. To Mm. have, like, to rehearse your wedding. I've never been to a rehearsal of a wedding. Is that a thing that we do? I think people do have rehearsal dinners. Like, the night before. I've never been to one of them. No, me neither. I think it's a thing, though. I thought it was an American thing, though. I mean, they do spend a hell of a lot of money on weddings. Like a rehearsal there. dinner. What are you rehearsing? Mm-hmm. How to How eat to dinner. Eat. <laughs> <laughs> have you eaten food before? If not, we'll have we'll, this event. We'll go we'll over you. You knives and forks you, with you. put you. it in your mouth and then you chew and swallow. <laughs> well, they're models. You so put the food in, you close you your mouth, know. you chew, you swallow it. That's the end. Yeah. It's not very... I don't know. It's not a whole evening, is it? I don't know. Or even like rehearsing what you're supposed to do, I feel like... How thick are you? Because it's not that complicated. I always thought they were actually excuses to just like have your closer circle there having a nice dinner before you have to have the one with everyone. Okay. It's like just your buds. Is not what your bridal party? Hen night or whatever it's for. Yeah. Although I didn't have a hen night. I don't really understand. It's weird. Oh no. I don't know. I don't know if it's like, because obviously I was marrying a woman, so most of the stuff you're like, hmm, this isn't really we relevant. We don't have to do that. Don't have yeah. to do this shit, actually. Any, yeah. any of the yeah. bits that we didn't want, we were like, nah, I'm not going to have that. I've never been on a hen night. And um, a lot of it is because I was living abroad when friends here were getting married, um, which turned out to be great, because I could just fly in for the wedding, mm. <laughs> miss the hen night. But some of them, it's like, oh yeah, let's go out and... I'll have massive inflatable cocks. And I was like, God. I don't want to say I'd rather be dead, but I would you rather would be rather, dead. You would rather be an inflatable cock. Or like, oh, let's go to the casino. I don't want to spend loads of money on shit. Like, and you're also like, I don't go to a casino normally, so why would I want to go now? I'll go to the dogs. Or like, when people go, to go I thought you meant like, you know, when people say, well, oh, that's going to the dogs. <laughs> I was like, yeah, What's the plan for the are? evening? <laughs> just to generally go to the dogs. Go to the dogs. <laughs> I just want to end up vomiting in a puddle somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever gets me to that point, fine. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, so, then Jamie's in her room, 
and she sees the ghost bride. She's got white roses all around her and she sees her in the mirror. So she runs to Kelly and Allison's room and they tell her that the ghost is called Rose, and that's why she's got roses, um, who is a girl who fell in love with the gardener and then died of a broken heart. No. And then they spend a long time dressing Jamie up in all their fancy clothes, which I think is really a very nice thing to do. Yeah. Because we're kind of set up to think that they're Bitches. bitchy. But yeah, and, then, and they're not at all. They're like, oh, have you not got anything to wear? Um, we'll lend you some stuff. And they like... She tries on all their clothes and they say, oh yeah, wear this, wear that. And they like have it, essentially. Yeah. Because we're, so they're all very rich models, aren't they? Mm-hmm. So they get loads of clothes for free. Mm-hmm. And they generally, like it's made up that Blaine lives in this completely different world mm-hmm. that Jamie can't relate to. And yeah, I would have thought they would have been like, don't touch my clothes. Yeah. Don't touch my shit. But no, they're really nice, I think. Um, so then we're at the rehearsal. You so liked this book. I so like much more than book. I did. I actually did quite like it. Because <laughs> um, it made me think, I've never seen those like 80s big hair soaps. But I imagine this is what they're like. Like rich people being mean and occasionally nice to each other and doing dramatic things. You mean things like uh, Dallas? Yes, or Din- Dynasty or Dynasty? Dynasty. 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 Yeah. I would say Dynasty. I think we say Dynasty to Americans say Dynasty. Yeah, yeah, or certain Americans do. Anyway, that, I haven't seen that, but that's what I imagine they all look like. Like, big, poofy, blow-dried hair, lots of lipstick, you know. You see, I lived in Latin America, so I've seen my fair share of telenovelas. <laughs> see, that's what I'm imagining it's like. But, like, the worst acting. Yeah, well, there are bad actors. Yeah, there are. <laughs> Some might say badly mm. written. Hmm. Mm. Well, I still enjoyed it personally. <laughs> um, anyway, so then this is so good. This is so 90s and I'm in love with it. So at the rehearsal, it's so beautiful. It's so classy. It's gorgeous. They've got a deep red carpet, a white satin canopy, and chandeliers. <laughs> and I imagine I haven't seen Pamela Anderson's wedding, but I think that's what it's like. No. Like big candelabras and like those kind of black raw eye and candelabras and like just very 90s fashion, like a Guns N' Roses video. Yeah, which would make sense because she was marrying Tommy Lee. Yes, that's what I imagine. Who then gave her hepatitis? Yeah, he's a knobber. I once, up here in my bookshelves, um, there is the Motley Crue biography and uh it's a wild ride let me tell you that like it's almost worth reading just because you're like jesus fragile oh masculinity God. yeah and just insane just what a lot of women let famous men do to them as well oh, it's grotten mm. i remember reading did you just say grotten it's grotten it's <laughs> gross like and rotten it's so grotten, grotten. <laughs> <laughs> didn't even mean to say that it just came out like that i remember reading that book <laughs> the game you know, where, like, people talk about negging or oh, stuff no, like that. Not so that like, all came oh. from this book, The Game, right? I read it yeah. years ago, years and years ago. And I've, weirdly, it's my most liked review on Goodreads. It's my review that I did of this book. And um, I found it really sad, a really sad book. Because the guy in it, he talks about sex a lot, obviously. And he talks about losing his virginity. And it was this really depressing experience. And he felt really dirty. And it made him feel really sad. But he was really glad that he'd got out of the way. Because that took the pressure off. And now he could go and have more sex. And I was like, but what? You just said it was terrible. And now you want to go and do it again. Do it again. It was just really grim. And it was like, it was all about men kind of doing these things to impress other men. And it was just so sad. God. And they were so unhappy. The patriarchy works for no one. No. This is what I'm saying. I agree. Also, follow us on Goodreads for, for more <laughs> hilarious reviews. <laughs> well, because was, this was a long time ago, back in the day that I had a boyfriend. And weirdly, um, while I was reading the book, I realised that something that had happened to me in a club a few months before was from the book. No. Yeah. But, so I was in a club and I got chatting to this guy and I had said quite early on in the conversation oh you know me and my boyfriend blah 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 blah. so I was like I've mentioned this up front so he knows we're just like chatting as friends because I was 21 and naive this was god I was a long time ago I read that book and um yeah so we just got to, we're talking about Jane Eyre in a fucking club because that <laughs> is the type of cliche that I have always been and um just as I was leaving, he was like, oh, you know, so can I get your number? And I was like, well, but you know, I'm like, got a boyfriend, so, but 
And he was like, oh, no, no, of course. I meant, like, just as friends. And I was like, oh, yeah, great. That sounds brilliant. So I gave him my number. And he kept texting me. And it was kind of fine. And then he started talking about his penis. And this was, like, before you could really send pictures. So it wasn't a photo, thankfully. But he referred to his penis. He d- did he use, uh, like, send a lot of messages in a row with, like, a dash? So he was drawing it out. Oh, do you know, he missed a trick. He missed a trick there. No, I can't even remember what he said. But it was, like, some penis reference. I don't even fucking know what he said. Um, so I just stopped texting him and I would have forgotten all about it if I hadn't then read this book and I was like, wow, he won the game Mm -hmm. because in the book, the game, that's what you do. So to even get a text back from a woman who's got a boyfriend, like you won. And I'm like, mate, you won nothing. Like, I don't like you. We were never going to fuck. Yeah. What, what was the point of that? There's so many of these weird neggy Mm -hmm. sort of things. Have you, did you see in the news this week about the... The CCTV vid- video from Paris. No. Oh, I did oh, see yeah, that. Oh, yeah, of that yeah, woman. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if um, listeners would have seen it, but essentially it was CCTV outside this cafe. And a woman was walking just by the cafe and a guy walked past her and said something to her. And then she... And they kept walking in opposite directions and then she turned around and told him to shut up or something. And then he followed her back around and punched her in the face. Yeah, that's brutal. And I was talking about this with some people and they were saying like oh it's so it's it's so insane that that happens and i was like this is just an extension of when a dude comes up to you in a club and goes do you want to dance and i go and oh yeah i go well yeah (laughs) (laughs) and you go oh no thanks and they go well i don't want to you're a fat bitch anyway or something like that it's just that immediately joking yeah Yeah. it's that like don't humiliate me Mm -hmm. sort of vibe and yeah i was like oh god that's just so awful I stand to me at school. I spent all of school thinking that I was so ugly because I was a bit, I was not surprisingly, a bit of a weird kid at school. I was like the goth kid, and so boys at school would ask me out, and I would always be like, "Oh, no, thanks." Um, and they would just be like, "I don't want to go." Clearly, I was anyway. joking. Oh my yeah. god, as oh. if, and I would always be like, "Oh my god, I'm so disgusting mm-hmm. that I'm a joke to ask out." Because I would just take that at face value, and it was only when I was in my twenties that I was like, "Oh, that was their shit, not my shit." Yeah, trying to not feel. <laughs> Pathetic. Yeah. Yeah. And being pathetic in the meantime. Speaking of unhealthy gender (laughs) (laughs) treatments, um, back to the book. So then we're introduced to yet another character, because if you haven't already lost track of all the characters, we're only on about page 10. So we're introduced to Stephanie Alden and Patricia Ann Thomas, who's got a white blonde bob. So we know she's a bitch, because that's bitch hair. Yep. Yep. Speaking of someone with a bob... (laughs) If I was in a film, I would be the bitch. Or Edna Mode. Or or well, both. Yeah. I can be I can be both at the same time. Um but you know, it's never like the beautiful romantic lead has a sharp bob. Yeah, true. No. She always tries to, to have the one. kind of yeah. long, wavy, mm. standard movie star hair that they all have. Anyway, neither of us has that. Yet we would both be the romantic leads. Right. So fuck Hollywood. Come on, Hollywood. I <laughs> anyway. feel like if it was a lesbian drama or romantic they might have my oh, hair oh yeah yeah come on everyone's yeah. got my hair in fact if it was a romantic drama they would have your hair and my hair oh like, yeah you would be the, the you would be the girly one yeah and I, yeah yeah mm. which is weird when you think about it but okay <laughs> anyway so patricia and thomas is suspect number two because she is preston's ex and also his cousin what right yes <laughs> and, and thus begins my um, major problems with this book. Mm. Uh, why would she be the maid of honor in any universe? Don't know. Yeah, I think they paper over it by saying, "No, oh, she must have had something on Preston." Mm. Mm. Still, I'd be like, "No, okay, you're just no. not coming to the wedding." Um, cousin. cousin, and they were in love and dating. I mean, I know it's legal. It's weird, though. I feel like it's more common in the States. Really? I mean, there's a lot of people there. Yeah. They've got choices. They've got many <laughs> more, more choices. choices. <laughs> if someone told me they had married their first or second cousin, I would be like, what the fuck? Whereas second cousin mm, is a bit better. I don't even really know what a second cousin is. It's I only like know it from American your shows. parents' cousin's kid. So, like, your mum's cousin's kid, okay. or your dad's cousin's kid. Mm, it's still a bit close to the... It's distance. a bit much, isn't it? Swim a little bit further out of your immediate gene mm-hmm, pool, I mm-hmm. think. But, yeah, like, I'd be like, one, you were fucking your cousin. She's mm-hmm. not coming. Two, she's definitely not being my maid of honour. 
I know. Oof. I don't know. Anyway, again, again one, just don't do it. Just, just don't, don't just, do it. Just don't do it. Just, just look don't a bit further. That. Just look a little bit further. And she's There's real. more people than that. In she's the world. a bitch as well. Yeah. Don't have her there. But we know why. It makes well, sense yeah. in the end. All right. But you still, know, for now. Okay. So also, Patricia throws Jamie evils for some reason. So basically, at this point in the story, we understand that women are either jealous bitches that throw you evils, or they're okay and they lend you clothes. Mm-hmm. And this is kind of upended at the end, which I quite like. I think I definitely like this book more than you did, but I quite like it. Oh, I sh- sorry, I, sh- I should have mentioned when you said the white blonde hair. Mm-hmm. Because almost every Point Horror book has a yes. person with white blonde hair in it, I looked up the adult incident <laughs> of white blonde hair. You have been procrastinating so hard this week. <laughs> Natural light blonde hair is rare in adulthood, with claims of the world's population ranging from 2% naturally blonde to 16% in the US. So that's just blonde, not even white blonde. 16%? I wouldn't have thought it was that high, but okay. That's just in the US, though. Mm. Blonde hair is most commonly found in Northern and Western Europeans and their descendants, but can be found spread around most of Europe. Oh. So white blonde hair it's is very... the rarest type of It must be there. dyed, though. Because my yeah. cousin's got really, really pale blonde hair, but she is naturally blonde, but she's, like, dyed it. Lighter. I guess that is a really 90s thing to have dyed it, like, mm-hmm. platinum blonde as well. Yeah. All right, fine. I'm fine. imagining everyone looks like Pamela Anderson in the 90s. Absolutely yeah. everyone in this book. <laughs> if only we all looked like Pamela Anderson. <laughs> yeah, right? Um, so anyway, the rehearsal goes on. Jamie basically is wetting herself over Preston. She's like rubbing against her chair every time she looks at him. Like a cat in heat. Exactly, exactly what she's like. <laughs> wow. Um, but then, oh my god, the silk canopy on the ceiling rips and spills dead doves onto everyone. Which I will say was quite good. It was quite good. And it had a bit good of visual. good writing as well. It said something like the, the smatter of death around them or yeah. something like that. And I was like, ooh... I, mean, I very much quite dramatic. imagined the wedding like Kim Kardashian's wedding. Because, I haven't seen God that. forgive me, I've seen at least one photo of Kim Kardashian's wedding. And I think they got married in front of a wall of white flowers. Wow. Yeah. And I think they mention loads of flowers at one point. So I was like, oh my God. Did she have two weddings? Because she, didn't she marry somebody before and it got annulled? And it oh, was yeah. like for 16 days or something. Basketball player or maybe just a tall man. Basketball player? <laughs> <laughs> tall man? He must be a basketball player. He's clearly over five foot eight. <laughs> oh, Our God. pop culture knowledge is like so weird, so vague. But I know so much about some things and so little about other ones. I'm happy with that, though. I'm really happy with that. Yeah, it's weird. I've never consciously looked up anything about the Kardashians, and yet have absorbed so much so about much them. Information. It's incredible. I read a thing the other day that, which is one of the young ones. I can't remember. Kylie. Um, I thought you meant the TV show, The Young Ones, and I was like, I don't think any of them were called Kylie. How is this related? <laughs> yeah. Where's this going? Um, people were crowdfunding to make her into the world's youngest self-made billionaire. She's not self-made. She's not also, self-made. I thought that was a joke. Was that real? Uh, apparently so. Fucking hell. She's not self-made. That doesn't She's not self-made. self-made. She's not self-made. If you yeah, grow I... up a millionaire, you're not a self-made millionaire. What sort of... Fucking idiot. Do you have to be to give money to someone who has more money than you'll ever have to continue having more? That is exactly what's wrong with the world. Is that real? Is that a real thing? Maybe I, I really didn't want it, it to be real. I really hope it was. I was being lampooned by the website. Anyway. I've seen quite a few people posting things from the Reductress and being like, this is terrible. And is I was that? like, do we not know? Oh, so you don't know the Reductress? Oh, it's so good. You would love it. It's like The Onion, but feminist. Ah, so okay. It's like a spoof website. But like of kind of it's like it's, it's like it's a women's magazine, but it's spoofy things. Okay. Um, it's really funny. Okay, yeah, but, that sounds um, like my street. They're obviously fake. Like the one article that people were sharing was um, woman decides to defy gender norms and call her baby son vagina, and people were like, <laughs> "That is child abuse. That should not be allowed." And I was like, <laughs> "Mate, do you fucking think that that's real?" You got people called dick. Well, that's what a lot of people were saying. <laughs> yeah. They were like, "If you can be called dick, why can't you be called vagina?" Yeah, Gina. For sure. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's where the name Gina comes from. <laughs> I didn't think about that. Maybe if you go to their weddings, it's Ms. Vagina. Ms. Vagina. Thompson or whatever. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I mean, you can be called Fanny. Now I'm just thinking of that bit in, um, is it the Big Lebowski, where it says, some men can't even hear the word vagina. Vagina. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
It's not my favourite word. I think those nicer. Yeah. It's anyway. also most people are using it incorrectly when they should be saying vulva. That's true because I remember reading a story that was referring to a woman shaving her vagina and I was like, Up inside! Yeah, like, <laughs> if you're getting hairs inside, you maybe want to get that looked at. Yeah. And also, should, don't put a razor in your vagina, please. It should be velvety. It should be velvety. <laughs> <laughs> it should be. Oh, God. Jesus Christ. Okay, God, speaking so of... off topic. I'm so sorry. Of velvety. Um, so then, speaking of press, Patricia says, Blaine is only marrying press for money. Mm-hmm. And everyone is really horrified by this, but I was like, uh, duh. Is she denying that she's marrying him for money? Also, Fucking she, lean into it, bitch. She's a crazy rich model. Well, so, yeah. Are they not marrying each other for money? Yeah. Anyway. Although, she does say, I think it's the same character says of Blaine, when her face goes, she'll just be another anorectic. No, that's correct. Is it? Mm-hmm. What, what do you mean? Like, if if you have anorexia, you are anorectic. How come everyone in the world says anorexic? Because they're wrong. No way. Yes! Today's grammar <laughs> lesson from <laughs> Kristen good. Logan. Yeah. I was like, mm, right. typo. But, yeah, apparently <laughs> no, not. that's right. Okay, another anorectic has been living on savings and a bunch of old photographs. And I was like, ooh, yeah, burn. caught me deep. Fucking hell. I know. Jesus. I think that's more about her than maybe else. <laughs> yeah. Also, won't we all end up living on savings? Mm, that's a good we, point. We what else pension? is a pension? <laughs> yeah. We're not yeah. Pension. Anyway, well, let's not go into the financial details of this book. So then, we really need to get into this because Drew is a sex pest. Basically, everyone in this book is a sex pest. Can Drew, just go into that? Drew is so much. gross. So here's where he starts to get really bad. So Drew asks Jamie if she likes to watch. Watch and what the fuck? You just met her, you sleaze bag. And he says, "I like to watch." And I was like, "So you're a voyeur?" Yeah. And you're trying to get this teenager, mm-hmm. this clearly virginal yet horny <laughs> teenage girl. She doesn't want to watch anything. She wants to do it. If any. Yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine being a voyeur? <laughs> And there's like a teenager. It's like you're missing out, mate. Anyway, what the fuck? Yeah. So then he Ugh. leads her down all these dark corridors, okay, to a secret room, which I was assuming was going to be a sex peephole, to be honest. Yeah. What else could it be? If someone says, do you like to watch Here's a Secret Room, you'd be like, oh, people are going to be fucking and I will watch them. And what else so, would you think it would be? It sort of is that, but there aren't people fucking underneath. It's just a peephole yeah. to watch the people ballroom? in a ballroom. Yeah. Oh, well. Not even a ballroom like the fun one at Ikea. <laughs> not a ball pit. <laughs> not a ball pit. I can imagine people just watching the ball pit and being like, oh, God, look at all those fucking plastic I wish balls. I was in that ball pit. <laughs> that would be the only point of it. <laughs> anyway, uh, so then they have a snog and there's a power cut and a fire <gasps> at once. And then for some reason... She says to Drew, no, let's not go outside. Let's stay here in this tiny room. Where it's safer. No, it's not. You're going to burn to death. Let's stay get here and suffocate. Hot. What the fuck? She was like, we'll get, sta- we'll get, um, uh, it'll be a stampede. I was like, how many people there? I know, not how so many will there be throughout this wedding? <laughs> <laughs> they are down in the ballroom and they're up. So, You'd be whatever. at a whole different bit. Both yeah. of them are... Sex pest morons. Oh, so rapey. He's anyway, so rapey. He's so rapey. He's gross. I can't stand him. Anyway, so we see the ghost bread again. Turns out the fire is false alarm. Blah, blah, blah. <sighs> stupid plot. So then Jamie can't sleep that night. Um, she runs through everyone's stupid motivations. However, she doesn't consider Clara or sexy bad boy press because she's never read a point horror, obviously. Because to me, I was like, suspect number one, suspect number two. Yeah. Clearly. Mm-hmm. Um, so she doesn't suspect them. Mm. And then she sneaks out to the ballroom and she bumps into Drew again. It's quite early and so she suggests that they go for breakfast and he says, quote, so many appetites, <sighs> so little time. <sighs> oh, God. He also He's says... Gross. When, also, when they're making out and the fire happens, he says, keep your eyes closed, you'll never notice. And I'm like, is that what you say to women in bed? <laughs> it's disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> Just keep your My eyes vagina just closed when you say it. It'll be, it'll be open. Not that it was open before. <laughs> God. <laughs> what? Just sitting here with my legs open. <laughs> I, t- I won't even comment. Um, yeah, oh, keep your eyes closed. It'll be, o- it'll be over in 15 seconds. Like, oh, come yuck. on. Gross, 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 gross. Gross. Ooh. Oh, I just can't stand him. He's just the worst. Also, the emergency services arrive amazingly quickly in this book. Mm. Like, 
the firemen arrived before they'd even realised there wasn't really a fire and then later on they shut I mean I guess that's what happens when you're rich rich people hotline yeah that is true maybe Um, anyway so then they're having breakfast Patricia comes in she's just had a workout and she orders a black coffee and a diet coke for breakfast now I quite like that because I've noticed in quite a lot of these Point Horror books the characters fair enough they're teenagers or in their early 20s but they eat pizza and burgers all the time but Mm -hmm. they're really thin and even sometimes it says like oh she ate all the time she could never gain any weight and you're like shut the fuck up yeah so at least it's showing that if you want to be thin like a model you're gonna have to have black coffee for breakfast and nothing else there is an incredible amount of fat shaming oh god yeah in this book yeah yeah (laughs) like that whole bit around like hmm i can lend you some workout gear if you want to or like you can have those pancakes if you've already worked out today or as the little bitchy aside, Blaine goes and orders a massive pancake breakfast yeah. with loads of cream on for the thing. And I was like, one, that does not work as a prank. It's <laughs> delicious. Like, oh, thanks, you just ordered me breakfast. Fucking stupid. No, yeah. see, I, I thought the book was making a point about that, though. Because the book isn't fat shaming. It's like the characters are fat shaming each other because mm. they're models and that's what they're doing. And yeah. I don't know, I quite liked it. I thought it was on purpose. Yeah, maybe. Can you tell I'm Deathkins? Yeah. <laughs> Defending my book. Love me thinks the lady doth protest <laughs> too much. Mm, anyway, so then Jamie goes to the gym. Oh, I've just remembered the best bit coming up. <laughs> is it this line that I'm going to quote probably is? Oh, I, probably not, but go on. Oh, okay. So Jamie's at the gym and she thinks, I've never seen so many naked egos. <laughs> she <laughs> needs a shag so badly. And the first paragraph in that bit is like, thrusting bodies. Mm. And you're like pumping you... sweat. Yeah. <laughs> it's like maybe Deathkins needs to get laid. Jesus Christ! Someone is fucking gagging for it. I almost made a really bad pussy joke then, but I'm really glad I didn't. Oh yeah, because Deathkins being a cat. Go on then. Yeah. Do no, it. I, no, I've, okay. I, I don't want to bring myself to that level. I feel like you've suggested. I'm in there in my head. Okay then. <laughs> <laughs> so then, oh god, it gets so much worse. So then Jamie goes into a hot tub and press perps on her in the hot tub mm-hmm. um just everyone in this book is so horny see this is why i think she's not horny though because she's like oh i wish i had like a full wetsuit on well because he's there she's not horny gross. for him because he's gross though yeah and he's like predatory and horrible like They're you can be horny this. but not for a perv <laughs> <laughs> you can be horny well, for fuck like anyone not you but not exactly <laughs> It's like when, you know, if you turn a guy down and he's like, it's so frigid, and you're like, I'm no, actually just dying for some cock, I yeah. don't want yours. Actually, I'm a massive whore, I just am not interested in I being one with you. everyone in this room, but not you. Yeah. <laughs> or better, I have fucked everyone in this room, <laughs> but I will never fuck you. No. Yeah. I would rather just go home alone. <laughs> Bye, sir. <laughs> um, anyway, so she's a bit uncomfortable. So she leaves and she goes into the sauna, and Preston follows her. And grim. To be sleazy again. Um, but then they are locked in the sauna. It's the shower all over again. It is. They can't open a door. Because again. they're too hot. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think they fuck in the sauna? No. Which is the which book is that from? That was Dream, Dream Day. Date. Yeah, mm-hmm. which is the best shit scene of all time. Yeah, very similar. They mm-hmm. just can't get the door open. It's too just hot. Just can't get the door open. It's too hot to open the door. I've recently been down to a Turkish bath, um, and it's really good. And we were in the sauna, well, the yeah steam roomy bit, mm-hmm. and it's just so easy to open. They're just, oh, I don't, no. I can't fathom a reason why that would get trapped. I don't, I don't <laughs> fucking know. I don't know. <laughs> uh, anyway, <sighs> Blaine rescues them, um, and then she drives Jamie out to this deserted pier and gets weirdly, really morbid. Mm. And she says, "Is it better to freeze or burn?" Okay. Uh, neither. Okay. That's shit. I don't. I, um, I like to be in equitable temperature at all times. I don't know if that's a choice here. <laughs> This and, I'm really bad at these games. Do you want to get stabbed or do you want to drown? Can I uh, find out? Just find here. Just leave me alone. Chill, yeah. eat a bit of cake, actually. <laughs> if that's okay. So then Patricia, pr- I can't stop calling him Press now. Velvety. <laughs> <laughs> so Patricia, Press, and Alison all drive up. Preston punches the car, like they have an argument, and he fucking punches the car because he's a knob. <sighs> he's an actual dickhead. 
<laughs> and then in response, Blaine calls him darling. I mean, this is Dynasty. Yeah, and it really is. That's yeah. what they would do in Dynasty. A man would get really angry and she would be like, oh, darling, do calm down. Mm-hmm. So I'm imagining they've all got massive earrings and big poofy Buffons, hair. Buffons, yeah. Yeah. So then um, I think there's actually a bit of interesting class stuff that gets mentioned here because it's mentioned that Preston is old money. Mm. And that Blaine has worked her way up from this little fishing village where she was born and she's kind of... His family don't like her and don't no. want him to be getting married. They want they want him to marry his cousin to like mm-hmm. keep it in the family, keep it in the posho. <laughs> Weird, isn't Can't it? Can't you just fuck your sister instead of marrying someone else? Gross. Well, if you were royalty, I mean, it's probably what you would be doing. Probably not not getting my opinions of the mm, <laughs> royal yeah, family. Maybe not. <laughs> anyway, I thought that was quite interesting that it, they're at least conscious of these kind of class distinctions or have you turned into me on this podcast and I've turned into you yeah weirdly yeah we have a little bit uh so Alison <laughs> decides to drive Blaine's car back mm. um but the brakes don't work she crashes over a cliff and the car bursts into flames mm-hmm. Patricia says that Alison must have committed suicide must right? Have. She must have. Must have. But, or, they don't seem to think maybe somebody tampered with the brakes, which is weird. Yeah, that's I, I thought think. that was what was coming, but they yeah. never mentioned it. No, which no. is quite odd, really. Um, so, then we have a weird bit in the book. This weird kind of head-hopping point of view shift. Yeah! What the fuck is the point of that? That's like so we get Kelly, Clara, Blaine, Patricia, and Stephanie's points of view, but they don't actually tell us anything. Do you think it's to make us go, oh, it could be any of them? But why does it make you think that? You don't learn anything suspicious oh, yeah, it, about them. It doesn't. It isn't a successful <laughs> method. <laughs> but I think that's maybe what they were going for. Oh, well, maybe. Like, oh, you know, in a movie know. and they'll show, like, one person in a room and the other person in a room and they'll be like, oh my God, look, they're all there being in rooms. Any of them could have done it. <laughs> maybe. I don't really know. It is pointless. It's just word padding, mm-hmm. I think. Anyway, then we're back to Jamie. <laughs> oh, unfortunately, she's so She's like horny but boring mm-hmm. at the same time. Because she's just a conduit for us to watch all this. Boring. Boring. <laughs> she Bored is just a horny. conduit. <laughs> Absolute worst type. <laughs> That's my uh, my Tinder name. Bored horny. Bored horny. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to fuck? Uh, ah, maybe. Yeah, I'm bored. Maybe. <laughs> so then she's in Blaine's room and someone delivers a photo of her and Alison, the one from the magazine at the start, if you remember, mm-hmm. the jeweled letter opener. But in the picture, Alison's face has been burned and it says, it should have been you. Dun, dun, dun. And in the most ridiculous bit, I think, where I was like, what the fuck is going on here? Uh, press comes in and she's like, how could you? If you wanted me to be dead, why didn't you just say it? And he's like, oh my God, it wasn't me. And they're like, yeah, but you sent it. Maybe, maybe, there. And she goes from like, she's like smashing up the room, isn't she? She like throws yeah. it across the room and she's like, I can't believe everyone was thinking of marrying you. Because she's then, gone full telenovela at this point. Oh yeah. Well, like it's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. And then like two minutes later, they're like, do you want to call off the wedding? And she's like, no. And I was like, so you believed he wanted you dead. Yeah. But you got to marry him? I think this plays into the point horror thing of so quickly, most characters can be convinced that their partner parents... <laughs> best friend or a teacher want to kill them yeah. and have been trying to I would need so much convincing to think that Annie was trying to kill me oh yeah I'd, I'd probably end up dead before David could yeah. get anywhere near me because like I mean after, before anyone could save me sorry because I'd be, be fair, like I would believe that Annie was trying to kill you over David trying to kill you he's not a killer Annie trying to kill me exactly that's what I'm saying that's how unbelievable it would does, be does Annie not like me <laughs> I thought we were friends. No, you are. That's why I'm saying that. Yes. It would, I would believe that anyone in the world was trying to kill you before David. Well, I'm really glad you don't think my partner's a murderer. <laughs> I mean, but you never do, do you? Yeah, he's never maybe, maybe, that's, maybe we should suspect him the most. Maybe we shouldn't be drinking this coffee. <gasps> oh my Isn't it, he's not tampered with it. It's a fresh That's batch. okay. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> you did the best I'm face. I'm gonna be there. so suspicious that my oh god, David's oh gonna murder me face. It's my telenovela face. I've been practicing <laughs> in case I get cast. Um, okay, so then it's the wedding finally. Woo! So everything is going great, but then there's a smell of roses and smoke, and the ghost bride appears. <gasps> she says Preston married was married to her. <gasps> And then picture this. I love this image. This is so telenovela. So then the ghost bride 
pulls back her veil and her dress bursts into flames. Do you like how I'm doing jazz hands? Yeah, it's good. Um, Flamey jazz hands. So come on, a fucking queen power move right there. So we should not be surprised to find that the ghost bride is Alison, queen <gasps> of the power move. Oh my god. Yeah, and then weirdly, I don't really understand this bit of description, Blaine peels her face off, mm. which I still don't understand having read this book several times. Does she peel her own face off? Does she peel Alison's, Alison's face, face off? Whose face is being peeled it's, off? It's really badly written. In order to, like, try and understand what's going on in any scene. Yeah, like, the mechanics of the scenes aren't great. No. Oh. No. No. Anyway, whatever. I like the dress bursting into flames anyway. So then we move straight to finding out what really happened. Yeah. So, plot twist. It turns out that Clara, Specky Clara with her notebook, she's a decoy. It's mentioned that she has science degrees. Don't really know what relevance that has. Yeah, why? She's like, I'm an astrophysicist. That's how she did all the tricks and stuff. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, maybe it is. So anyway, she's got science degrees. It turns out that her sister, who is called Dove... Yeah, another Dove! Is that a perfume oh shout out? Oh my god! Shout out to the perfume? <laughs> is it? Conscious? Dove Daniel. It must be. Yeah. Because how common can the name Dove be? It isn't a name. <laughs> I've never met a Dove. No. I mean, I've met a bird, but <laughs> not a human called Dove. I've never met a Dove bird either. I mean, I don't know if you would call it meeting. Met. <laughs> I've just met this lovely uh, sparrow on the way to it. Yeah, I don't know if we'd call it that, but anyway. So Dove, which now I'm imagining that like all the point horror books are linked in like mm-hmm. a point horror verse. Yeah. And like, this is Dove, Dove from Daniel. the perfume. Mm-hmm. Dove Daniel from the perfume. So it turns out that Dove was a wannabe model who lived with Alison and Blaine. They were all like kind of aspiring models living together. And Dove married Preston but he crashed the car that they were driving and just left her to die. So he got out of the wreck and just walked away and she died in this burning car. He's a dickhead, honestly. I can't stand him. So then Clara got in touch with Alison, who had just been dumped by Preston, and Blaine, who he just asked out, but she says, obviously I wouldn't do the dirty on my friend and go out with my friend's ex, to which I'm like, oh, all this shit is coming together now, I understand. So convoluted, though. It is a bit. (laughs) So it turns out, basically, long story short, the three of them planned the whole thing together. So Clara, Alison, Blaine planned this entire thing. Blaine never was going to marry Preston. It was all a big thing to frame him and to make him pay for Mm -hmm. what he had done. So this is what I love about this book, though. So it turns out, if you really think it through, they were stunt women. All of them are stunt women. So they did these stunts in asbestos clothes. I love that. Like, I set a car on fire while wearing asbestos clothes. Like Your lungs are fucked. Well, yeah, that's you're, true. You're going to have breathing problems later well, in life. they're really going through a lot for this. And then if you think about it, how much did they do? They did all these tricks with a mirror, to, so it was the ghost bride. They drove a car off a cliff, somehow. And, and like, she's been dating a guy... For what? At least a year. Yeah. And having sex with him. Yeah. The entire time. Yeah. But it is very much implied that she's a massive publicity yeah. hoe as well. So maybe it's so for she that. gained from that as well. Yeah. And they also really take the time to explain that the doves were fake. They mm. didn't really kill doves. Yeah. Well, they were, they were dead, but they'd been dead ages. Yes. They were so like, like stuffed been, ones. Who's been going around picking up doves that have died yeah. of natural causes? How are you going to get hundreds of taxidermy doves? Not a lot of this makes sense. No, it doesn't. I just really like the idea of them banding together and being badass stunt women. Yeah. To frame this guy. That would have been a much more interesting story. Yes, it would have. But I quite liked it. So then, I don't know, I'm like, is this book well making I, a feminist point? I will say, someone says this. What better revenge than to kill yourself in front of a guy who dumped you the night before his wedding? Mm. Uh, I can think of... A Lots. million better revenges <laughs> than that. Kill him, number one. Well. Kill an adjacent person, number two. And take all his money, take his car, take his house. Uh, okay. Burn down his house when he's not in it. Killing yourself in front of someone is not revenge. That is a loss. In the game, <laughs> that would be the absolute worst thing you could do. <laughs> oh, I, I won this game because I killed myself in front of the woman who wouldn't date me. No. That's not a win. Are you picking holes in this shitty plan? I am, yeah. <laughs> I think you're... I see what you're saying about the feminist thing. I just feel like most of the book, it's set up, it seems like it's about women fighting over a man. Mm-hmm. And like, how often 
I find this a lot. I'd be watching like a Hollywood film or something and I'd be like, why are these women fighting over this mediocre man? And the book is set up as if that's what it's about. Mm. But then it turns out it's, I've written in my notes, it's Sisters Before Misters. It is. Which I quite like. Yeah. yeah. Overies Before Broveries. And I like that, that you think it's like a really kind of old fashioned sexist thing, but maybe I'm being too generous to this book. This is, this is like you and Funhouse. Yeah. Absolutely, it is. <laughs> it is high drama. And then they do come together in the end. So I can see what you're saying. I mean, and I, I love a melodrama. If it's over the top, I'm in. And I feel like this is super over the top and then kind of plays with your expectations. So I quite liked it. I also hate the rich, though. And I thought, you've ruined a perfectly good car there. Yeah, that's true. Like, and it was like a Porsche. Yeah, but it's his, so who cares? Oh, no, shit, it's hers. It's hers, yeah. Oh. So you've thrown your own car off a cliff. Mm. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay. <laughs> I guess if you can afford it. Just the money wasted oh, on all this. Yeah. It's, we could have given that to what's her name? Kardashian. Yeah, right. To make her a billionaire. <laughs> self a self made billionaire. Oh, fuck off. I can't Christ even, almighty. I can't even deal with that. By the by the whole confession bit I've just written fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I thought you meant that that was what uh, Jamie said at the end. Can someone please just fuck Will me? Will someone fuck me? I've been gagging this whole book. So what stupid names have we got in this? Dove. Dove is bad. But I don't know. Do you think it's a show? No. Okay. <laughs> stupid name. Okay. The one that made me laugh is that Blaine is called Blade, Blaine Harrod. And I was like, is that meant to be like Harrod's the shop? Oh, like King. I feel oh, like Harrod. <laughs> I don't think they're thinking about that I'm just like if I was trying to think of something posh would I be like Harrods is posh <laughs> yeah. oh, that is my name Emily Selfridge exactly I was also really confused because it says something at the beginning about her mum being called Charlotte but Blaine Charlotte something and I was like so wait who's Aunt Charlotte oh, and why shit. have they got the same I was well, like, she was named after her. Who was it? Yeah, why? And, and also she just never appears again the character of a mum is pointless yeah pointless absolutely pointless throughout Ridiculous. Anyway, I know. There's too many characters. Um, the other thing that I thought was funny was the setting, the place where it, the story is, is called Point Harbour. Yeah. And I was like, Come I on. get it. Yeah. Point Harbour. Thanks. Okay, <laughs> okay, American things. I am going to make the point again that I think this concept of having a wedding rehearsal is really American. Correct me if I'm wrong. If you are British or any other non-American nationality and you've had a rehearsal dinner, fine, I'm wrong. But I just don't think we do that. I just think it's rich people. Maybe. And we're just not them. We're not rich. <laughs> Sorry, we can't mate. afford two dinners. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. <laughs> can't afford two dinners. <laughs> can can get is, everybody dinner once. This is me eating it. for the month. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, the other thing that I noticed was parking valleys, which I've never seen here, a parking valley. Mm. Which I've seen in films, like American films, but I have never seen here. Oh, see, I have had valet parking before, but not here. Not in this Mm. country. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe it's not just American, it's just not British. Yeah. Um, The other thing was, I thought this was weird, the description of what someone is wearing is, quote, plaid flannel PJs and fuzzy scuffs. What is a fuzzy scuff? What the fuck's that? Also, there's a a phrase earlier on that I'm pretty sure it isn't a phrase, um, where she says something like, it was like one of the uh, old movies her mother and father liked to vid out on. What? Vid. Vid out. Vid out. What? I didn't know that. It's not a that. phrase, is it? No. To vi- oh, what are you going to do? Oh, I'm just going to vid, vid out. out this evening. Is that like Netflix and chill? <laughs> 19th <laughs> Netflix, Netflix and chill. And chill. <laughs> Parents just making out in front of this video. Maybe. They're vidding out. Maybe vidding out. Um, yeah, I still don't know what fuzzy scuffs are. Oh, well. In 90s things, there's the phrase completely maximally furious. <gasps> oh, my God. I know, it's really nice, isn't it? Completely maximally Oh, can we get onto the fashion? Oh yeah, but I also the oh, my sorry. other 90s thing is that someone says gag me. Not with a spoon though. It's quite eighties, isn't it? What's so, gag what? me? With a spoon? You've what? not heard gag me with a spoon? <laughs> no, it's I've like never an 80s, heard gag me before. Eighties phrase, gag me with a spoon. How do you do that? How do I do, oh I don't know. Like just I don't like, No, I don't down understand. Th- I'd never actually thought it through. Gag me. No, I know. Also, uh, someone's wearing a scrunchie. Oh, yeah, of course yeah. they are. Let's do fashion. Oh, my okay, God. Ready. Fashion. Right. So much fashion in yeah, this. Yeah. Uh, at one point, uh, Kelly is described as a slender, strong-looking girl in a pale green clinging jumpsuit. God. Yeah. Woodwear. <gasps> mm-hmm. 
I, you could totally pull off a pale green cleaning jumpsuit. My that ideal, look good. my ideal outfit is um, the girls onesie from the Groovies in the Heart video. <laughs> I haven't seen that. Oh, we we'll have to watch that. Okay. It's psychedelic. Okay. Um, Jamie wears velvet pants and a cropped cashmere top woven with sparkling thread. Oh my God. To to the rehearsal dinner. <laughs> <laughs> and when she's wearing that, she's got an elastic rhinestone bracelet in her ponytail. Oh my god, so classy! Mm-hmm. Oh, wait, sorry, I've got the best one. The best is one. Is the workout one? <laughs> <laughs> this is Patricia working out. Working out. Okay. A skin tight silver unitard over which she pulled a pair of navy compression shorts with silver stripes down the side. Over it all, she was wearing a silver and navy, navy suplex jacket. What is, suplex what is jacket? that? That's a wrestling move. That's a suplex. A suplex. This but, is a double P. Yeah. Hmm. Is it the same thing? Maybe. She's just ready to it's jump into ring at any point. It is a 90s fashion mystery. <laughs> that is some fucking outfit. I really want a silver unitard. Unitard, just as a phrase, it's just so funny i feel like it's offensive yeah i know it should be it's so like close to not to being it. a thing we should say yeah oh skin tight silver un- i would wear that outfit to be honest as well to go yeah, to the gym that yeah. would look good that would be good also i noticed that um someone is has a laura ashley dress which do you want to bet is floral and ruffled yep because mm-hmm. i'm sure i had a dress like that in the 90s <laughs> um okay so here is our top trumps do we have a too stupid to love heroin no do you think she's not stupid? Mm. I think I've written your description from a previous episode. She's living beige. Well, yeah. horny. Horny beige. Horny living beige. Not so stupid that she puts herself in shit situations. When the building is on fire, she says, <laughs> no, let's stay in this room. Yeah, okay, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. I think she's... She's not even stupid. She's just nothing. She's never in danger, though. No, that's In true. an unusual point horror move. Mm-hmm. That's a good point. So, yeah. She'd have to be pretty stupid to die in this. Book. It's not very scary. This and there's book no, it's not real fire either. No, that's true. Mm. So I don't think she's. Just, it's not that I don't think she's stupid. I just think she's nothing. She's she just could, horny nothing. She could not be in this book, and you wouldn't notice. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Why not have a different point of view character? Anyway, do we have a sexy sociopath? <sighs> I mean, I don't think he's sexy at all. Are you mean um, Preston or Drew? Preston. Either of them. They're both. Like, just blindly They're both attractive. just, like, sleazy, but boring. Rich, oh, I just can't stand rich people. Sleazy they can't and boring. Think they're attractive. Yeah. Um, not really bad boys at just, all. Just sort of pathetic, rich losers. Yuck. <laughs> I mean, I guess Preston, he kind of is. I mean, he's evil. He's yeah. did leave But not even in an interesting way. No. Can you not be better evil? No, Preston. <laughs> Can you be less bland no, in your like evilness? the evil that you are. You too. He is a perv though, which is gross. Mm. He like follows a teenage girl around. Oh, absolute sex pest. Yeah, sexy bad boy, sex pest, sex pest for sure. Boy. Yeah, uh-huh. mm. and Drew, I don't know. He, I guess he's a good mix for Jamie because he's pervy but also boring. Very I beige. imagine him. I think he's someone's younger brother, isn't he? Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. So I just imagined him as like quite short. But like constantly following around and almost dry humping her legs. Mm-hmm. Like a dog, so like she's... a bat, like an annoying dog. Yeah, so she's humping Preston <laughs> and he's humping her. Yeah. So it's like a Oof. like a conga line of people humping each other. A human centipede Ugh, of hormones, of if you will. Ugh. Human humpipede. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Death toll. Zero. Mm. Well, dove. Pre-death. But that's not within the narrative. Mm. In the narrative, nobody dies. Ah, the doves. They're already dead. They're already dead, true. Nobody yeah. dies. Um, is it good, though? We're I feel like we're going to disagree. Okay. What are you uh, gonna it? It's a high drama. Mm-hmm. It's high drama. Um, did I enjoy it? I didn't not enjoy it. Mm-hmm. I wasn't as annoyed as I have been. <laughs> reading other books I don't know what would you give it I give it a four I quite enjoyed it but I like melodrama I you like do. real over the top shit hmm mm, I reckon I give it a three okay that's fair which is a total cop out <laughs> <laughs> is it good bad yeah it's probably good bad I'd probably give it a four redonkulous yeah, yeah. for good bad mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm gonna give it a four for both yeah I quite liked it fair enough 
what are we doing next? Well, this is our episode 10, mm-hmm. isn't it? This is our... We're, we're, we've decided, I realise p- people might not know this, we're no, doing seasons of 10. Mm-hmm. Um, so, as this is our season 10, uh, the next episode will be our last episode, because we're doing a comparison mm-hmm. episode. To our find wrap-up episode. King of mm-hmm. season 1. Mm-hmm. So we'll be mm-hmm. or queen. Empress. Mm-hmm. Definitely not princess. <laughs> no, God no. So we'll be pitting the books against each other. Mm-hmm. Oh, in our top trumps way. Oh yes, exactly. So Who's we'll have the... like a, a genuinely good winner and then a good bad winner. Mm. Might be the same book. Might Best be different books. Sexy bad boy sociopath, mm-hmm. perhaps. Mm-hmm. Uh, highest death toll. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Dumbest terror. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Most 90s. Most fashion. I think that's going to be hotly debated. Yeah. I think we're going to have completely different opinions. Yeah, We've probably. not talked about it yet, but no, I, I think know. we're going to have a cat fight. Yeah, yeah. So that's <laughs> the next episode is our kind of season one wrap up. Mm. Um, and then we're going to have a little bit of a break Short while break. we prepare for season two. However, if you are one of our much cherished Patreon supporters, there will be no break because you will still get your bonus episode even when we're on... Uh, between season breaks you will still get your monthly episode um if you're on the five dollar or above level you get a bonus episode every month and the ones so far have been robot stein fear street books but there's going to be a wide variety of all different point horror adjacent content including um some 90s movies Mm -hmm. that we're watching this Mm -hmm. weekend Mm -hmm. (laughs) can't wait for that very excited about (laughs) Uh, yeah, so if you're one of those patrons, thank you so much. Um, and also, if you're not one of the patrons, thank you. Because um, we've had a really great response. Mm-hmm. To say we're only on episode 10, so we've only been doing this for... A couple of months. Two and a half months. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, we've built up a really nice community on social media. Um, we're getting more and more reviews on mm-hmm. iTunes, which really helps us. Um, I, my favourite thing in my week... I've, been, I've had a horrible, stressful week. But it's been really made better by getting a little notification on my phone from Twitter of someone mm. just going, oh my god, I've just discovered this podcast. And I'm like, oh yes, that's really made my day. And people are doing like, making it a, an event. Yeah. Having like, Point Horror Night, like Teenage Scream Night, where yeah. they listen to the episodes. Or someone was listening on their commute home through a graveyard mm. this week, which really made me smile. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so thank you to all of you um, who are just listening. Yeah, we just <laughs> well. really appreciate it. And if you are not communicating with us on social media then please do join the community get into the chat get yeah. chatting with everybody else um where can they find us on social media um they can find us on twitter at um teenage scream underscore um and they can find us on instagram at teenage scream pod mm-hmm. and also you can find us both on goodreads yes because i've been reading a lot of really shit books lately <laughs> so i think i've been throwing down some quite good reviews just because I'm so angry. I love an angry review. I love a one-star review. Oh my god, there's one uh, that might be the most um, middle-aged white male book I've ever read. <gasps> I can't wait. I've read a really offensive book this week and I can't review it because it's someone that I vaguely know. I can tell you. Is it me? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's not you. But yeah, I can't. It's so misogynistic. I hate it so much, but I can't. It's killing me, but I can't say what it is. But it's terrible. <laughs> oh, good reads to mm-hmm. find out what that is. Kids. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, thanks for joining us, and do come back next week for our season one wrap up to find the absolute best or possibly worst point horror book of season one. Who is the pointiest of a point horrors? <laughs> <laughs> Will we know? Who is the most horrible and pointiest? <laughs> Join us next week to find out. Bye, Bye guys. Bye.